but when those chemicals are constantly going on the hair, little by little, they kill the hair follicles. I have also seen in some areas where people braid their hair really, really tightly. You'll often see that they've got hair loss around here where you've got that weight, you've got that constant weight on the, on the hair, which can really just keep pulling the hair out. And then the, then the follicles are damaged. So no matter how, it happens, we must stop what is causing the damage. That's the first one. If you don't turn the tap off, you're still mopping up in the other corner. Sometimes I see hair loss in a hormonal imbalance. So if it's a hormonal imbalance, then the hormones must be balanced back again. Sometimes high stress, if someone goes through a very stressful situation, one of the reactions can be hair loss. So what can you do to bring it back again? Ah, there's one more that I didn't mention and that's anemia. If a person is anemic, it can cause hair loss. So what's anemic? Anemic means very low iron in the blood and anemia can be caused because of heavy blood loss at period time. A lot of women suffer from that and that can cause anemia and the anemia can cause the hair loss. Another cause of anemia can be low hydrochloric acid because iron is bound up in food and it needs acid to liberate it from food. So it's very important that the person ensure they have nice strong hydrochloric acid. A simple way to ensure that is to have a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper in a little bit of water before every meal. If you're finding that a little bit hard, you can have the juice of a lemon before every meal. Important to leave a break between meals. Important not to drink water with your meals because that dilutes the hydrochloric acid. Also important to have a very happy, relaxed environment at the meal table. So the causes of hair loss can be anemia, it can be high stress, it can be a hormonal imbalance, and it can be damage that's just physical damage that has been done to the hair follicle. And so depending on what the cause is, the anemia, you can strengthen the hydrochloric acid, balance the hormones. But what can you do to the scalp to encourage the hair to grow again. You can make a mix that you can put on your hair. And this mix is, let's, let's make up the mix. So half a cup of coconut oil and half a cup of castor oil. Castor oil is a very thick oil, but castor oil penetrates deeper than any other oil. So when that is put onto the scalp, it penetrates even deeper. Coconut oil is a very nourishing oil. It's an antifungal oil, antibacterial oil. But what you also can put with that, so now you've got a cup of oil there. To that cup of oil, you can add 10 drops of rosemary essential oil. Rosemary is a herb that's a specific for the scalp, rosemary essential oil. So you could make up this mix in a jar and mix it very, very well. And maybe once a week, you, you massage it into the scalp. Your hair will be very oily, of course, but you massage it into the scalp. Just even the massaging into the scalp stimulates blood supply to the hair follicle. That castor oil penetrates very deep and wherever it penetrates, it can revive life into that area. And the coconut also is a very nourishing oil and the rosemary essential oil stimulate. Every herb stimulates different parts of the body and this rosemary herb is a specific for the scalp, the massaging. So leave it in as much as you can. Maybe you choose a Sunday when you may be gonna be home all day. And at the end of the day, you wash out. Now you might need to put shampoo on a couple of times to get all that oil out. Just use a little bit of hot water and then and then a nice amount of shampoo and if it's still a little bit greasy maybe shampoo it again now that brings us to the shampoo there's something that you must keep right away from and it's called sodium laurel sulfate sodium laurel sulfate is what's in many shampoos and sodium laurel sulfate kills the hair follicles so it's important to take a magnifying glass into the shop and read the labels in places like whole foods sprouts trader joe's where they have a lot of uh, health foods and they have a lot of supplements and they have a more healthier brand of products so have a look for a shampoo that has no so we've got a make sure you realize no sodium lower sulfate because the sodium lower sulfate is a chemical that causes the foaming of the shampoo and that sodium lower sulfate has the ability to kill the hair follicles in the scalp so please keep away from that you can get some very nice coconut based shampoos coconut is very nourishing to the scalp what's also important 
here are some additions to the treatment. So additions to using this once a week. I mean, if you're home a lot, you might even do it twice a week. Exercise, what exercise does is it increases the circulation of the blood to the extremities and the scalp is considered an extremity. So exercise daily, especially the high intensity interval training. The high intensity interval training, because of the periods of very high intensity, that really gets the blood moving out to the extremities. So that should be done daily. And hydration, keep well hydration. Remember the rule of thumb is, is eight glasses to 100 pounds body weight. That's a good rule of thumb too, to know how much, to, uh, how much water to give the children. Nourishment, we need to nourish that scalp from the inside because your scalp is fed by your blood. That's why when you exercise, you get more blood to the area. But when you get the blood to the area, you want it to be well watered. Exercise will automatically put the oxygen in there and nourishment, we need to be having a high fiber diet, high fiber. We also need to be having generous amounts of protein. Here's your legumes, your nuts, your seeds. So generous proteins. Proteins are the building blocks of the body and healthy fats. So there's your nuts, your seeds, your avocados, coconut, coconut and olive oil. So nourishment is, ne is necessary. And remember when healing happens at twice the rate, Sleep. You want to heal, you got to get eight hours. Eight hours, not negotiable every night. The sleep is vital. The sleep is not negotiable. If you're not used to that much sleep, little by little by little, you can train yourself back into sleeping longer. Rome wasn't built in a day, but little by little by little, as you take those steps that are conducive to good sleep, breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen, light or no evening meal, going to bed early, soft light, soft music, fresh air coming in, nice clean, natural fiber sheets and pillows. All of this is conducive to a good night's sleep. And you will find that little by little, the hair just might start to grow. As we conclude this session, I hope the insights shared today empower you to take an active role in your health journey. Remember, holistic healing encompasses not just the body, but also the mind and spirit. Embrace the knowledge you've gained today and apply it in your daily life. Prioritize nutrition, lifestyle choices, and natural remedies to enhance your overall well-being. Together, we can unlock the secrets to a healthier life. Thank you for joining me, Barbara O'Neill. Be sure to subscribe for more lectures on holistic health and wellness and don't forget to take care of yourselves.